All right, so my name is Yuri. I do open source. That's what I like to do, and that's what I cause enough damage to have any lasting effect. And um, so today I'm going to talk about MapLibre. It was one of my little projects that could. So what is MapLibre? I mean, most of you probably heard it by now. It became a name, kind of. The goals of MapLibre is to provide all the tooling you need to go all the way from data, the bits, to anything visual or usable, i.e. pixels. We are open source. We started as a fork of Mapbox. We appreciate Mapbox. Don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, there. There's some sometimes negativity about Mapbox changing the license, but in reality, they had to do what they had to do for the business purposes, uh, reasons, and that is totally understandable. And yet the license, uh, prior, previous license, the open source license, allows us to clone it and fork it and rebrand it and publish it and drive it forward with the community help. So we fundamentally have two core projects and a lot of smaller projects. The two core projects being the uh, GLGS, otherwise known as GLTS because it, get, it has been modified to TypeScript, and the native, which is targeting Android, iOS, and many other uh, C++-oriented devices. There's a lot of other projects that I'll mention, like Martin and uh, some experimental ones, and we're BSD licensed. And yes, we do accept the nations. We are a nonprofit. So very quick, brief history. Uh, the bragging rights right here. Um, it's all about license. So at one point, uh, Mapbox did a little commit to their repo saying, oh, the license file has changed. The very next thing I do is I text message, sorry, not text message, I post a tweet saying, well, how about we provide, we create a map Libre? Very, uh, I think it was, let's see, eight minutes later. Yeah, exactly eight minutes later, uh, CEO of Mapbox replies to my tweet saying, uh, we love open source, to which I say, yes, we love Mapbox too. And, but we cannot work with a non-open source license. And then Luke contacted me and uh, from Stadia Map and then uh, Map Tyler. Uh, got involved and uh, MapTiver organized the get together for moving this forward. And we basically had a meeting summary which says we are setting up MapLibre and that's going to be an organization that will, at first, will just have MapLibre GLGS project. And then later on, it onboarded a number of other projects. So, where are we now? These are slightly outdated. They, I, like every, every presentation I do, I have to update these numbers, which is kind of nice, you know? Like it means it's growing. Or maybe I, that's why I didn't update it. Maybe it's shrinking. No, it is growing, and um, it's gaining uh, a lot of popularity in terms of uh, our core projects. The stars and forks, is, I guess, is a good indicator. One, one, uh, one, I immediately see that uh, the stars for Martin, for example, has been moved to 1.4 thousand. Uh, so that, it's clearly growing. We have a lot of downloads. We're pushing 150 thousand downloads per week on NPM. Uh, if, like at point, one point, I think it was even hitting near 200 thousand downloads a week. So it is very active. We have open governance. The government governance. The government board is elected every one year. So we are very rapidly electing members every week, every year, sorry. <laughs> I am not awake yet. It's too early. I work on California time. Um, some of you might too. So the, uh, the board it gets refreshed every year, even though this year it got reelected fully as prior. Uh, but we have an opportunity, which means if some board members decide to step down or just don't want to uh, contribute as much anymore, there is a way to rotate them out. 
Uh, we have steering committees for both the native and uh, GeoGS, and it's a very open and inviting group. Please come join us. We have amazing sponsors. Uh, Meta just became gold. This is actually slightly outdated. Meta just yesterday, actually, I think, uh, became a gold member. Um, Amazon is a platinum, and there's a lot of amazing supporters. Most of the, um, uh, well, not most, but the substantial portion comes from smaller donations. $5 a month, $10 a year, whatever. It's uh, these little donations really help us move forward and hire people rather than fully rely on volunteers. Tons of contributors, lots of passion for maps. That's, I guess, the, the biggest thing, right? Now let's go for the vision. So first of all, one of the visions is we want to go, as I said, from bits to pixels. We want the tooling to convert data into the formats that we want we can consume. For example, Planet Hour, an amazing tool that can, in one hour, transform the entire OpenStreetMap data set into vector tiles. Zoom 14. It's, we're talking one hour, one machine. Slightly beefier on the beefier side, but with a laptop, you can do it like in two hours or so, maybe two and a half. Um, so an amazing tool. Imagine the, the transformation the required to convert the entire data set, the entire planet. Uh, serving tiles. We have Martin. I'm very actively hacking on that little tool, uh, that, that service. It's capable of massive serving of data from all sorts of data stores, from po like Postgres or MB tiles, PM tiles, and it serves it to the, uh, it even allows like custom functions to be implemented in SQL so that you can actually do requests per user, per user request customization of the data that uh, in a vector tile format that the user receives. We render tiles, web, native, some experimentations with Rust, unified Rust implementation of renderer stack that actually can do both the web and the native targets. Um, and lots and lots of plugins. Oh, plus we are heavily involved in standards because we want to be the de kind of de facto place for all these rele relevant standards to move forward and unite people behind it. So we have tons of efforts. As I said, there's, there was meta effort that just landed where we have proper support for uh, the new uh, uh, GPU architecture on, and iOS devices. And Vul we're looking heavily into Vulkan and other new technologies like that. Plus, WebGPU is landing soon. Everyone heard of it? I have a Linux laptop, which means Chrome does not support it yet. But um, one day, I hope to see that. Um, in real life, um, hill shading, uh, 3D terrains, uh, fonts. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff that people are experimenting with. There is uh, MapLibre RS. That's my personal pet project, uh, favorite pet project. That I did not implement it, but I keep a close eye on it. Uh, uh, an amazing developer from Germany actually re-implemented quite a few of the technologies for vector visualization on all the platforms using Rust. So it's like WebAssembly and uh, native all from the Rust code using all sorts of backends like WebGPU or um, uh, Metal, et cetera. Um, does not do fonts yet. That's why there's no streets. But then again, you know, Google, I think, does the same thing. You know, you have to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in to actually see the street name. And so let's pretend that this is we're, we're following the Google footsteps here. Um, Martin, so I, it's a tile server, basically. But it allows you to do custom data querying in real time. So you can ask, uh, you can pass some parameters from your code to Martin, which will pass it directly to the database. And there is a standardized way for database to implement any kind of functions uh, and customize the result and create per user, per, per request, different tiles, possibly with some caching, obviously, to like here, it's a data set of taxis, I believe, uh, taxi data set and trips. And uh, then you can kind of like customize the average. Um, 
lots of 3D fun stuff. I mean, this is basically, ooh, I know, um, the hill shading and uh, 3D based visualization that has been done actually quite some time ago, but it's still, I still like the picture. Um, so different hill shading. Um, Volcan volcanic eruption modeling, again, we're talking about uh, uh, map Libre with uh, 3D terrain tiles. And this actually came from PM tiles. Someone experimented with a, a PM tile technology on top of map Libre. Uh, so there's not even a server. And, um, and lots and lots of demos. This is another one for the GL actually. Uh, the, uses all sorts of overlays for uh, the weather and wind data. There is, why is my, weird, interesting. Uh, the contour data, again, uh, ability to uh, add all sorts of interesting layers on top of it. I mean, DACGL has far greater capacity that MapLibre does. So we're not trying to really fulfill all these complex visualization needs. Our goal is to have a really solid base for everyone to de facto rely on and to work stably. There's such a word on all the platforms and provide the base for everyone to do all sorts of amazing this on. Lots of, uh, so roadmap. We've uh, checked off quite a few checkboxes. There's a lot more to do. I'm not gonna go into what we've done. Uh, so the future is we want better native support. Uh, ideally, um, we want very performant, uh, optimized for all sorts of use cases, uh, code that runs on every type of device. We are thinking about doing non-web Mercator. I mean, the world is kind of squarish, but not really. So we're trying to move away from that concept of a web square. Um, Single code base is really nice to have. I mean, imagine you're, you have one platform that can actually run ID identically in every kind of scenario. Um, we have hired a number of full staff maintainers. So that's where the donation goes to. Um, we are trying to get the whole zoom out and have a globe view properly done. It's still still kind of like a work in progress, but we're getting there. Um, maybe Rust, again, Rust is not a goal in itself, even though I love the language. It's more of a means to solve the fundamental conundrum. How do you address two completely independent different platforms, the web and the non-web? And those do not like each other too well. Uh, I know there were some experiments even by Mapbox where, which tried to compile Mapbox native to WebAssembly. I, considering that no one is using it, I guess it didn't succeed. So it is a complex project. Um, fonts, that's my pe personal pet peeve. I mean, we're so used to these individual glyphs that are separate from one another. You know, the letters in English or in Latin uh, uh, script and Cyrillic script and Hebrew script. Even Arabic is actually kind of separate, even though they have ligatures. Those ligatures are very, very simple. There's only like four types, you know, not connected, connected on the left, connected on the right, connected on both. Easy. That's actually how Maply brand Mapbox solved uh, Arabic scripts. Uh, but there's a lot more which are really confusing and con convoluted and where you take a character and then tons of additional Unicode code points modify the previous one and it just keeps morphing. It's kind of like one of those transformer characters and that we do not support. We would love to support that. Now I want to go into standard stuff. And MVTs are amazing. Everyone heard of it. That's like the standard vector tile thingy that the building, the fundamental building block. I mean, I even discussed it with Google last time where they were at the previous conference. I'm like, well, how about you provide MVTs for us? They're like, well, maybe. Um, so it is a more or less understood fundamental standard that everyone supports. I mean, there's tons of tooling. Postgres can generate it natively. Uh, 
numerous to like Q just can read it natively. But we would love to move forward. Um, uh, the performance is really slow for MVTs because they're, they were created for very simple and uh, straightforward task of data visualization. But I mean, we've moved forward in terms of how we pack data. We do not go this way. We now go columnar. And there's like all these ways of optimizing data store. We do not like to copy data. We like to use it in place and just kind of reference it and this whole zero copy idea. Um, and uh, the standard is focused on 2D and it's very hard to use for non-visual, even though if you have all this tooling to generate, to verify, to visualize, to process, to morph the data, why not use that same tool stack for more than just visualization? And it's uh, harder to use for other use cases, for other domains. And yeah, I work for Rivian, an amazing car company. We want to use it for all sorts of other interesting things. And so the new use cases, let's say we, we have a geometry, it's a 2D geometry. How about we add some additional values along the geometry, elevation, the width of the lane, um, the time the picture was taken at each of the of each of the point along that lane, multi multi line. Uh, lots of interesting use cases. Maybe really get rid of Web Mercator. I mean, it's a holy grail, but uh, H3 is a wonderful technology, but it's not very well suited for uh, visualization because well. It is suited for visualization, but it's not very well suited for zooming. As you zoom in and out, well, you cannot make the whole thing wobble because you have a tile on this play, on, on zoom five and you have another tile on zoom six and they do not align. You need them to be aligned so that you can transparently zoom in and user does not get like all these little weird triangles either overlapping or, or missing or, or either way, otherwise you have to do, deal with a lot of additional math, which might also be a path forward. Maybe deal, uh, support geocoding and routing and other use cases. Valhalla, I think like either half of two or two thirds of their code from the looks of it deals with tile generation. So in other words, Valhalla, the, that amazing uh, routing engine, most of their code is not about routing, but about preparing data for that routing. And you have all these uh, amazing other tools to deal with the tiles. So why not somehow consolidate the, to the tool sets? And then there's like 3D, we all like 3D, uh, reduce size, improve uh, performance, all these other amazing stuff. Uh, this is my personal tiny little idea that I have been pushing. Uh, we can have references on tiles without, instead of doing clipping. Clipping is really painful to resolve on the client side, especially when it's not for visual use case. So why not store geometry in its entirety in central tile and then just reference it from the near, uh, neighboring tiles. I mean, this assumes that the geometry is not, does not span like a hundred tiles because that, then it kind of defeats the purpose. But if the tile, if the geometry on average, like road segments, again, I work for a com car company, um, does not span too many tiles, just put it in the center one and just do some other referencing and current schema actually fully allows that. You just have to kind of uh, define how you're going to reference it. But maybe we should put it in the standard so that more tools have a uh, native understanding of this. Like for example, QGIS right now, if I visualize this type of style, oh, it just simply clips it because it does not, I cannot configure the whole data set to say, oh no, don't clip it. And um, it, it supports it for a single tile, but it does not support it for the entire tile set. So uh, this allows it very convenient processing. Main idea I want to get across is that we have power to change all parts of the stack. We can do data generation, we can 
uh, we have con good connection with Postgres people, with uh, to, uh, the people who create the tools for data processing. We can do the data visualization. We can do the data serving. If we introduce a new technology or new standard, we can in at the same time influence all of these parts of the stack, all of the layers. We are online. Come join us. There is a GitHub for uh, here. The first one is the link on how we're discussing MBT and the tile format. So that's where it is. Um, actually, I, one more thing I did want to mention is there is an uh, interesting cough tile experiment. Do take a look at it. Uh, it's a proposal by a researcher in Europe. And um, uh, uh, he, he was able to show very substantial improvements to the tiling performance and uh, uh, compression and other things. So uh, very interesting. It's both cough tiles and comp tiles, uh, one for the actual individual tile format, and one is the format for storing all tiles, very similar to PM tiles. There is actually some conversation about comp, uh, comp tiles and, co and PM tiles merging as V4 and using some of those ideas moving forward. This is my, uh, our site, and now the questions. Any questions? Yeah.